Again, let me get her going here. Okay. There we go. Now I got her going. We have a body on the broom. Mm -hmm. We have one shoulder on this side, and we're going to put the other shoulder directly opposite. We don't want to look like Quasimodo. Uh -huh. So, shoulder on each side here. Okay. And the machine I'm using is called a kick winder, and it's 104 years old. Wow. Now we're going to put backward shoulders on the broom. I want to take. Try to make equal amounts. Okay. Hold that for me. Who did you just do broom for, Richard? Um, he did it for a TV show called uh, Broadway Boardwalk, Boardwalk, and he just did it for the Lone Ranger movie. Yeah. And he supposedly, I just heard he's in Martha Stewart's Living's magazine again this month. So, yeah. That's a good thing. Yes. <laughs> okay, so those are on there backwards, but what do you think they're yeah. going to do with them? Yeah, that's right. Why would I put those on there backwards? Right Any ideas? Yeah. No? Yeah. But if we you, turn it yeah. over like this, you remember yeah. that now? And if you would get that Velcro for me, we're going to cheat, get that Velcro yeah. off of that press for me to pull it off. Thank you. Flat. Mostly everything we use is old, but I like Velcro. Handy. I admit that I cheat just a little bit. Yeah, it's handy. Like the hammers that we use, these are about 120 years old. They're made by the C.D. Dickinson Company. Feel it. Pretty Whoa. heavy, isn't it? And we'll show you what we're going to do with that here just in a second. I'm going to trim this off. Nice. And when you sharpen your knife with your wet stone, you want to be really careful that you don't cut the end of your finger off. Okay, we're going to take this wire and wrap it down under the handle. Give a couple turns there. Tuck our ends underneath. He's all spread out now. Yep. <laughs> he looks like he's gone haywire. <laughs> <laughs> This part is really Can you guess the name of this machine? It has a very specific name. Room making machine. Well, that's good too. <laughs> <laughs> but I kick this wheel down here and the wires attach the handle. So when I kick the wheel, it winds the stuff on. So it's called a kick winder. There you go. So we're partly there. That's Whoa. what our broom looks like right now. He's a flower. <laughs> looks like a sunflower, doesn't it? With a long middle. Okay, so my hammer. Just got this beveled edge here. We use this to slide on the handle and hit this down, which makes a nice top on the top of the broom. We turn this off again. Very sharp knife. Very sharp knife. That's why I keep the band aid handy. Yeah. <laughs> come on. Last piece, I want to come off there. Okay, the last layer going on. Spread out with your fingers. I tell the kids this is kind of like patting your head and rubbing your belly and chewing bubble gum and everything all at the same time. Mm -hmm. Trying to get the same thickness all the way around. Mm 
Probably not your first room. No, not my first one. I've been doing about five years now. I learned 25 years ago in Harmony as a tour guide. And in one of the buildings, there was broom making equipment. We'd walk in and say, and this is broom making equipment. And I just thought that was totally stupid that we'd talk about it, didn't know how to use it. So they found a gentleman who came over and taught me how one afternoon. But trying to find the equipment was, you know, virtually impossible. So I looked for several years and then found it about five years ago. Wow. So then I had to retrain because it's been so many years since I've done it. And since then, I've learned to tie. The table behind is called a tying table, so I can sit at that and make brooms with that as well. In fact, I make deer antler brooms. And, I saw um, that. Yeah. That was really That doubles as a back scratcher. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> But I put them on horse hames and all kinds of anything funky that I can find. I like to make brooms out of. Yeah. It's like if you see a, a witch's broom called. Yeah. I like that. Okay. Halloween. I love it. Wrap that. There's no nails. I don't know if you noticed that or not. It's still a little bit. Not witch's broom. Some of the ones we did this year. Yeah. Okay, this is going to go down on the handle. Wow, that's fun. There's one in there on a, it's a piece of sycamore that has four branches coming off of it. And we put a broom on each one of the branches. Oh, jump the broom for a wedding? Uh-huh. Yeah, we do a lot of those. They're starting to become really popular. And we find out what the bride's color scheme and what flower she's using. And uh, just did one this summer that both the bride and the groom's fathers had passed away. And they didn't want flowers. So we decorated with butterflies to represent the dads. Aww. That was pretty cool. And I'm getting ready to do one for a Native American couple. That's going to have to be Willow. And then we'll put dream catchers and feathers and you know different kind of stuff like that, that in there. Was so It'll be fun. I'm that anxious to do I think that will be fun. Yeah. No. Okay. I always lose my hammer. So to keep my wire from getting away from me, I can find my hammer the next time. Look at that. Okay. One more time with the knife. Turn that off. Why you have two hands? I actually have four. I collect them. They're hard to find, so. If I find them, I get them. When do you usually find them? Um, most of my I found on eBay, believe it or not. Okay, so if we take this off, this is what we have. It's not going to sweep very well. <laughs> so that's when we take it over. You saw me sewing that one over there, sewing the. You find the new one. Step on that. Watch your, watch your belly button. Oh yeah. There we go. Okay. Glad I still have some battery. I'm almost out. Let's <laughs> we'll see how you do this. Okay, this is our needle. Points on both ends. This is artificial sinew that I'm using. And it goes into the broom. Underneath where we've wrapped it around the broom. And it comes out on the other side. And you'll see it when I come back out this way. So pull that tight. Come underneath here. Come out through there. Oh, you too, take to care loose. of joy. And the palm uh, thimbles that I'm using, a friend of mine made me. And they've got big metal things oh, in there. So neat. when that needle gets hard to push through, uh -huh. I can use it to push through there. Otherwise, if you don't have them on, you do this. Yeah. So you want to wear them. Yeah, you gotta have you got to have your protection. Absolutely. So... My, Then you is hard to work with. It wants to gum up on you. Okay, so this is back and forth, over and under. And if it gets hard to push through, I can push it through with my thimble. I'd already stitched the top layer and realized I put it in there too low, so uh -huh. start doing the oh, bottom layer cool. for it. Normally you do it from the bottom up, but. When I put it back in to do it, I thought, oops, <laughs> I'd already gotten ahead of myself. Well, there. 
Come on, still splitting it. Oh, that is neat. Isn't that neat? Okay, last stitch. We don't use any knots in it. Come on. What I'll do, I'll come underneath, put the needle in, push it through, and I'll cut the tail off on this end. It's not going to come out of there. Uh -huh. So once you pull it out, and this is just a little whisk broom that we've made. Oh, that is so neat. Beautiful. Thank you. And they get one more treatment. They get a haircut. Oh. So that's right there. And normally they're all fuzzy like that one sitting up there. This uh -huh. has a little bit of a haircut. Uh huh. It goes into the cutter. Gather it up. Give it a haircut. Oh boy. I often ask young men when they come up if they would like to have a haircut with that. But they yeah, give them a buzz cut. I don't think they want that. Oh, and if it's got a good enough haircut, they'll stand. But it's off center because of the handle, so there you go. Oh, there you go. But you don't ever want to store room that way. No. You hang it. You, you want to hang it so it's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 